cold outside, it tingles in my heart. Breathing air that clears my mind, I'm all for a good start. I hear those jingle bells, people singing about love. Hey guys, welcome back to the Vlogmas. This is the second to last Vlogmas, so we're on Vlogmas 11. Um, in this video, basically, I'm gonna be going over that Kiwi dollar trade that I kind of spoke about, briefly spoke about in the previous Vlogmas. So let's jump into the charts and watch me do my live ASR. Hey guys, so I just wanted to do a live ASR and just go over this Kiwi dollar trade, which ended up being a 1% loss. I took it on the 17th of December, 1800 hours, so pretty much New York session here in the UK. Basically, we've had a push up and what I was waiting for was, so we had the impulse push down and then I wait for the first low to be broken and then a retrace on that level. So essentially I got in at this candle right here, this retrace, so at the close of the 1700 hour candle, basically 6 p.m. That's when I got in with a 15 pip stop. So let's just put this here, it was a buy on the 17th confidences i would definitely say this is definitely more of a valid trade because it's not coming from a clear descending um so that's really the main thing that i look for between high probability and a valid is if it came from ascending or descending nature so if in this case it would just be valid um and we can say here that we're trending and it's impulsive because we are trending ultimately we are pushing up and I guess on the one hour on the structural level, you see we have a push up, had a messier correction and then another push up. So I'm actually curious, just looking at this now, just life thought process, if this is the same size as the impulse for those who've watched my um, back testing with me knew that I'm sort of testing out the size of the impulse. So that's quite interesting just to, I'm just making a mental note on that. Um, again, this is just live right now. So here, profit loss minus one. This pair is Kiwi dollar. Now for the screenshot. So there we go. And then I also just put that in here. Session will be New York session. Stop size is 15. This style is basically just a regular flag for me. And then usually my ASR, I really honestly just keep it simple. Um, I also forgot to put in a little tag note. Let's do this again. So I just keep it simple when I'm writing on the ASR, just a couple sentences. So here I just stressed how I will take this trade over and over again. Usually this setup will work 80% of the time. This case, it was a 1% loss. That is probabilities. It's just how it is. Again, we're here, we manage risk, we stick to our plan. We can't avoid losses. From a liquidity standpoint, we understand that we have levels here that price tends to gravitate towards. Uh, it's just inefficient price action as well as over here. So price tends to come back to fill that before it pushes up. Uh, but again, that's more of a confluence. So taking a short here is definitely a lot more valid. Uh, and this is why I've just put in here price returning to certain areas to grab liquidity, causing price to become efficient. You notice that price always comes back to certain areas such as this area here, grabs it, and then we get a reaction. Again, I can find another one like in this area here. We have multiple areas of inefficient price action. So again, market tends to just come back and fill that area. And you can tell that with this candle here, this is definitely trying to get people caught on the wrong side of the market. Um, but yeah, I'm aware of that and I can put that into my ASR. That That's something that I could have noted as if I knew price you know, could come down here. But as I've back tested, I know that this is a probable setup as well. And this is what works for me and my trading style and personality. So as it's the weekend, I just thought I'd quickly do a quick forecast and uh, overview of how the markets were looking. So AU, since I took a trade on Kiwi Dollar, there was actually an entry 
on Aussie dollar. However, at this time, I was actually taking a nap. I won't lie. <laughs> so um, yeah, I was taking a nap at that time and then I actually missed the entry right up here. And literally within 15 minutes, I was already pretty much all the way down here. Um, we can double check that. Because I remember I woke up feeling bummed out that I actually slept through the alert, the alarm. Yeah, literally within this, within like 15, 15, it was already pretty much down here. So yeah, that actually ended up becoming a loss. This is one that I definitely would have taken because uh, again, it's in my plan. It's just this time around, didn't manage to get in that. But yeah, it's very interesting seeing how price fills these areas of inefficiency. Same thing here. Price comes back to it, taps it. Price comes back to this, taps it. So yeah, it's very interesting. And sometimes when you have too much knowledge in the markets, and this is something that I've read even in Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, sometimes it actually confuses some people. And I think there's always a battle of egos in the markets within strategies and communities that, you know, this is the only way that you can trade, and this is the only way you can trade. But you know, you can take, you can trade like this, or you can trade like patterns, you can trade like with MACD, with EMAs and whatnot. It doesn't really matter. Whatever works for you, works for you. So. Euro dollar, we have this push up. It's not the cleanest, but if we do look at it on the four hour time frame, you can see that we are pushing up, making high highs, high lows. We are definitely trending daily. Haven't really looked in the daily much to be honest, but this is obviously pushing to the upside. I guess the question is, you know, are we exhausting this push up? And let's have a look at this poll. Let's measure this out. You know we'll see what happens um especially as we're coming towards the end of the year we'll see what happens ej definitely messy price action so we see how we actually pushed up forms this wick and we basically retrace came back into the pattern right now not interested at all but we'll see what happens um but yeah this is pretty much the my thoughts of the market so far so i've been doing a bit of my yearly reflections and i thought i'd actually quickly share a few of my reflections, things that I've learnt and really stuck with me or things that have really sort of clicked. And the first one is that the concept of 3 plus 2 equals 5, but so does 4 plus 1. And that comes from the idea that there's always more than one thing to do something. And for us to always be open and have that um, grace to understand that people come from different experiences, come from different levels of awareness, and they see things differently. They've experienced life differently. So we must always be open and accept that there's just multiple ways to go about something. And where I see that most prominent in my life is within trading and sort of the whole strategies, the communities out there. And I also see that in relationships. And that kind of leads me on to my second point, which was it's okay to let go of what built you up before. Again, going back to trading wise, it's it was hard to, to leave my first ever community, which, which happened this year, because it's what really built me up. It's what really set the stone, the foundation, those building blocks. And it's kind of hard to sometimes just let go of that. And, and we sometimes question our ability to, to see what we are without that thing that has helped us grow. And, um, I think it's it's okay to flee the nest and a lot of big blessings big opportunities have come and my life definitely did change for the better when i was able to actually allow myself to grow and the last one that i wanted to talk about is one that i've really been thinking over and over and over again the past couple months is my vision is an equilibrium so whatever goal i sort of set myself or my ideal vision or, or the ideal kind of person that I want to be, want to have, want to like things I want to do. It's all coming from a line of equilibrium. So what I mean by that is whatever positive or negative feeling we have or positive or negative experience, that's absolutely natural because it's just us adjusting to an equilibrium and to like a thermostat, for example, we have a neutral state and whatever positive, there's an equal and opposite negative, whatever, a happy thing that happens there's also a negative thing that can happen so what that means is we can reframe any negative to understand that there's always a positive there's always a good outcome there's a silver lining 
And on the flip side, it's understanding that we can never really be 100% happy, that life will also have its downfalls, that life will have its ebbs and flows and it will have its negative. But knowing that the negatives won't last forever and that there'll be another, you know, happy, positive moment. I feel like I've been really surrendering to God's plan for me. No matter what has happened, I know that things do happen for the good. And I love the analogy that, you know, I've, I'm surrendering to God's plan and no matter how many times I deviate from it, it's almost like I'm getting rerouted back to equilibrium, back to God's plan, you know, just bring it back full circle and keeping Christ in the center of it. And I love that analogy. But anyways, yeah, that was just some short, quick reflections that I wanted to put into the end of this video. Uh, we are gonna be approaching the last ever Vlogmas um, in the next video. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys again for all your support. And if you have been following along, tagging along in my Vlogmases and my journey. And uh, again, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. I hear the single bells, people singing about love. Like I'm forever young